But this morning, can we put our hands together and thank God for the ministry of Dr. Tish and welcome to World Shakers Christian Family Church. And we honor you and thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a joy it is to be here. We have had such an awesome, awesome morning, and we're having a, a wonderful time. The Marble Hall hospitality is next level. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the love you've shown us, and it's been such a great honor to be here from the time we connected at CFC a few years ago when Dad, Apostle Nikki introduced us. I was so blessed, and now we're here. Look what the Lord is doing. Thank you so much. And Pastor Dwayne, we had to, God had to connect us out here from far away and connect us in a different province. It's been great getting to know you more. What a joy it is. Um, and thank you for the wonderful MC, and you did such a brilliant job. And for attending the whole conference. I, I don't know what Pastor Dave is going to do for you, but on his behalf, I would like to give you a copy of Destined for Greatness, one of my books. So that book will, you're destined for greatness. So I'm just prophesying into your life, you're destined for greatness. There's greatness in you. So you're going to get one of our books. And on behalf of Dr. Francisca, you mentioned somebody who, is, who drives from far. Mama Shabang. I'd, on behalf of Dr. Francisca, I'd love to give you a copy of Dr. Francisca's book, Crazy Faith. That's her latest book. It's a... It's a powerful, powerful, life-changing book uh, about her journeys in faith. She's a wonderful author. She's written eight books. She's written and published, released eight books, and I'm on my 20th book. So we love books. So read books, buy books, invest in books afterwards. Um, for all the men, we came with a whole box and uh, some gifts for you. So after the service... Uh, pastor will tell you how every man in the house can get a copy of this book. It's called Overcoming the Giants of Life, and it talks about the eight giants every man has to deal with, from issues of money, issues of health, issues of porn and relationship management, etc. How do you deal with the real issues out there as a man and overcome those giants? So it's a brilliant book that will really address certain things that are real in our lives. We're very uh, blessed and, and open and candid when it comes to ministering to marriages, to families, and to your life. Praise God. Are you ready for the word? Yeah. Praise God. A special welcome. My beautiful wife is here. Uh, we've been married 19 years as of the 31st of August, 19 years of marriage and 20 years of knowing each other. And we're blessed with three biological children, three adopted children, and four grandchildren. And that's Hannah there, our oldest biological daughter. <laughs> Praise God. Put your hands together for them. Now let's get into the word of God. Let's bow our heads. Father, we love your word. The entrance of your word brings light and it brings understanding to the simple. Teach us today. Guide us, correct us, instruct us, equip us, empower us with your word. We love your word. We seek after your word more than they that seek after hidden treasure. Your word was found and we did eat it and it was the joy and rejoicing of our hearts because we are called by your name, O Lord of hosts. So today as we gather right here in Marble Hall, teach us and equip us, Father, that we may live and demonstrate Demonstrate the kingdom of God in this world that we live in, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Well, um, let's get into the word. I love the word. I live in the word of God. I enjoy the word of God. And um, just to let you know, there are books out in the, in the hall. Uh, make an investment into those books. They'll teach you. I write a lot on finance and the marketplace, how to succeed in business. One of the books called uh, The Judeo-Abrahamic Wealth Factor has made over nine millionaires. Nine people have become millionaires from reading The Judeo-Abrahamic Wealth Factor, looking at the model of the Jewish people, what it is that they do in the Torah that helps you to become successful in the marketplace. And the same principles have moved my wife and I from where we were before to now running 12 different businesses, we're into education, we're into writing books, publishing, etc., etc., and movie making now. 
the principles in the books work. It's not an experiment. We're not trying to, 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 to see what, how, how things will turn out. We know. We have seen it. We have lived those principles in serving God for many years. I've been born again for almost 27 or 28 years. And for those 28 years, I have been a tither and a giver into the kingdom of God. I love to give. I love to sow. And God has blessed that tremendously. So I want to encourage you, get into the word of God and study and research and enrich yourself and establish yourself. It is the acquisition of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that will empower you for marketplace success. Amen. Amen. I want to talk today on the subject, the lech lecha, the lech lecha. You'll see and follow on on the notes, and I hope you'll be taking notes while I preach, because I always say to people, don't be mesmerized by the pastor's nice shirt. The shirt won't change your life. It's the notes. It's the wisdom that changes your life. Amen. So do take notes and go home and check if what I'm preaching is actually in the Bible. And then if it's in the Bible, let's practice it. So I want to talk about the Lech Lecha. And we're going to begin our journey in reading in the book of, uh, go to Galatians in the New Testament. Let's lay a, a, a New Testament foundation and then we'll validate our, our ethos, our belief and our principles from the book of Genesis. So Galatians chapter 3, and we'll build our case from verse 6. It says, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham believed God. I want to challenge you today, believe God. Believe God, it will be accounted to you for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they that are of faith, somebody say, that's talking about me. Say it again, that's talking about me. Know they th that they that are of faith, the same are children of Abraham. That's us, we are children of Abraham. The Bible says, a Jew is not a Jew who is one outwardly, but who is one Inwardly, The moment you got saved, you became a Jew. So when we state and say, you know, the Jews are so wealthy, you're talking about you. You're a Jew. You're wealthy. You're ordained for wealth. So we are the children of Abraham. Verse 8 says, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify us, the heathen, through faith. And he preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all the nations be blessed. All nations here is talking about families, people groups. In you, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 9, and so then, so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. The Bible has just stated that you are blessed. For as many as are of works of the law are under the, the, the curse of the law. For it is written that cursed is everyone that continue and not at, under all that is written in the book of the law to do them. But then, not, pardon me, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident in this, that the just shall live by faith. It doesn't say they might live or they'll try and live. It says the just shall live by faith. Somebody once again say, that's talking about me. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, the pastor is talking about me. The Lord... <laughs> And the law is not of faith, but the man that do with them shall live by them. Now listen, verse 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree. Why? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. 
This is powerful. He's talking about a great exchange that took place. That Jesus hung on the cross and took the penalty so that there can be a divine exchange and we can now access what was on Jesus. And in the same way he is saying the gospel was being preached through the life of Abraham. So when we study Abraham, we're studying the preaching of the good news, the preaching of the gospel. We're hearing and seeing the gospel unfolding in his life. So what we have learned thus far is you are a child of faith. That's clear. And because you're a child of faith, you are blessed. But in order to access this blessing, you have to Go on this thing that I call the journey of faith. You have to step out of your comfort zone and go on a faith journey. The faith journey is a journey of sacrifice. It is a journey of the establishment of covenants. Understanding the power of covenants, and Pastor Davi was alluding to that in his, in his teaching, in the building of the temple, in the building of the, the tabernacle, you sacrifice. Your sacrifices open doors for you. Your sacrifices move you to your next level. And we're going to read from Genesis just now, and we're going to see Abraham, whom God, the, the, the text the, the context of what we're talking about here is Abraham. When Abraham was told by God to leave his land, he left and he came to, the Bible says he came to uh, the, the plains of Morah, which were geographically, if you study, I study everything in my Bible. I study the maps, I study the, the full stops, I study, I study everything in my Bible, okay? The three books, the Judeo Abrahamic Wealth Factor, Masters of the Economy, and Birthing a Mega Economy, have 15,000 hours of research and study that I did before those books could come out. 15,000 hours of studying the book of Genesis alone, just to give you that wisdom. So I love to study, I study everything. So I studied the maps. So when Abraham arrives in the land of Canaan, geographically, it was the lowest point. That he built the first altar. Then the second altar was geographically higher than the first altar. Then he goes, the Bible says, and Abraham went down to Egypt. He backslid. And then he came back from Egypt. And the Bible says, and he built again the altar that he had built the first time he came to Canaan. So that was his second altar, but third altar experience. Okay? I'll explain that tonight. You need to come tonight. Don't miss tonight. It's going to be powerful. And then he builds his next altar, which was geographically higher than the next altar. And then he had his next altar, which was his fifth altar, which was higher than the previous one. And then his ultimate altar was in the, in the mountains of Moriah, where he was now sacrificing Isaac. So level by level, when we talk in the New Testament, we call it, I'm going from glory to glory from faith to faith and what what in essence we're saying we're following the pattern of Abraham of going to the next level so many people disqualify themselves from their next level because they are not willing to sacrifice at the level that qualifies them for their next level you cannot get into your next level until you're willing to sacrifice at that level I had to understand to move into the realm of millions in currency and revenue, your thinking has to be different. Your language has to be different. Your vision has to be different. Your relationships have to be different. So I had to sacrifice stuff at level one in order to get to level two. And I'm not talking about lockdown levels here. I'm talking about blessing levels. God has levels. The levels were there right from the beginning. Amen. So you need to understand, in order to get into your next level, there must be sacrifice and there must be an establishment of covenants. The covenant you establish will always be to the measure of the manifestation of where you are. In other words, the money that's coming into your life, the business that's coming into your life, the favor that's coming into your life is concomitant to the level of your covenants and your sacrifices. So you step into your next level by sacrificing more. Hallelujah. So God is teaching us here. Every new level requires a new sacrifice. 
Every new level requires a new sacrifice. I'm telling you, I've never stepped into new, any new level without having to go and sit with my spiritual father, Apostle Nikki, find of a and say, Dad, I'm about to go into the movie industry and this is what it's like and this is what it's going to take. And he speaks a blessing over my life. He speaks a word over my life. I sacrifice, I sow seed and I activate principles in the realm of the spirit and my next level appears. Every level, every single single one of our 12 businesses is a product of a sacrifice and a seed that I sowed into my spiritual father. Without sacrifice, there's no entering into your new level. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You cannot walk on water and experience the supernatural without stepping out into the unknown. I didn't know a lot of things about the film industry, but I said, God, you told me the only way I can reach millions. God had told me, I've called you to reach millions. So I was busy preaching and doing everything I could do in, in, in my sermons to reach millions, but I was only getting thousands. And then God says, I told you to preach the gospel to millions. And I said, I'm trying, I'm doing my best. He says, you thought it's sermons. That are going to get you to the millions. The only way to get into the millions is if you enter mainstream media platforms. One sermon will get to thousands of people. One movie will get to millions of people. So I realized, oh, God's calling me into the movie industry. So I said, okay, God, I'm going for it. But I don't know anybody in the movie industry. I don't know how it works. I don't know how it's going to operate. But you're going to have to walk on water. You're going to have to step out. And walk on the water. It's uncertain. It's uncomfortable. It's scary. But you've got to do it. As long as you're holding on to the comfort of today, you will never pr possess the promises of tomorrow. Oh. Hallelujah. So to step into the natural, into the supernatural, go into the unfamiliar. So now let's go over to the book of Genesis. I want to read Genesis chapter 12 for you here. And then we're going to... Talk about the lech, lecha. I know some of you are trying to think, what language is that? Well, it's Hebrew. So we're going to teach that and help you understand that. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1. It reads, and I'm reading from the Torah. So it sounds slightly different from uh, King James and other versions that you may have right now. But it's still the Bible, okay? It reads, Hashem said to Abram, go for yourself from your land and from your birthplace. And from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those that bless you. And the one who curses you. I will curse and all the families of the earth will bless themselves, will be blessed through you. And Abraham went as Hashem had spoken to him and Lot went with them. And Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. And Abram took his wife Sarai and Lot his brother's son and all their possessions that they had amassed and the souls that they had made in Haran. And they left to go to the land of Canaan and they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed into the land as far as the site at Shechem until you come to the plain of Morah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And Hashem appeared to Abraham and said to him, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built there an altar to Hashem who appeared to him. And he established the covenant right there. Praise God. Powerful story of a man who was busy serving his own world and his father and living in his own world. And God begins to deal with him. God begins to separate him. And he calls him by saying to him, Lech, Lecha, which is the word, go forth. Here's another, this is the contemporary Jewish Bible that you're seeing on the screen. And Adonai said to Abraham, go forth, lech lecha, from your country and your people and your father's house to a land that I will show you and I will bless you. God said to him, go forth, lech 
lecha. Now, I want to break this phrase down to help you understand because it's written here in our Bibles in English, but English is a very poor subject in expressing the heart and the mind of God. It does not have the capacity to express everything that God is saying to us because the original Hebrew language is written in picture form and each picture carries prophetic import and meaning that you need to understand. So when you read our, our scriptures, there's what we call lost in translation. Now, I don't know what language you speak. Maybe you speak Venda, Kosa, Zulu, Pedi, or Shona. I don't know what language you speak. But if you tell a joke in your vernacular language, and I come there and, I, and everybody's laughing and I'm trying to listen to you, I may not laugh at the joke because it's not making sense. Then you'll try and translate it into my language to help me understand. But because I don't understand the history of your culture and of your people, I may not laugh as intensely as everybody else. Why? Because there's a loss of meaning in the translation. So what happens when they were translating the Bible into English, they sought the best words that would be as close as possible, but they were using what we call current parlance, the current meaning of a word in your language, which does not carry the original thought of the writer. So when you read, for example, the best example I always give is Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. It begins with the words, Bereshit bara Elohim, God, in beginning God, in beginning God. But the word Bereshit, is a very interesting Hebrew word. It means beginnings. But the word beginnings broken down into the letters and the pictographical meaning of each of the letters literally says the father sent the son out of the bait. Bait in Hebrew is house, like Beth, Lehem, Beth, Shemesh. Beth is house. So the father sent the son out of the house to send him to put a crown of thorns on his head and die on a cross in order to establish covenant for people. That's one word giving you a whole passage in the beginning God created the heavens. Just that one word gives us a whole meaning if you break it down in Hebrew properly. So now you see, okay, there's a loss of meaning and value in translating the Bible. So when he says, lech lecha, God said more than just go forth. What does lech lecha mean? Thank you for asking that question. Let me answer that. This is what God was saying when he said to Abraham, Lech Lecha. He said, go for yourself within yourself and access that which is within you. That will make you a blessing to the nations. Powerful. So now scripture comes alive. Scripture is now in 5D. Now you're experiencing the reality of scripture. God was just saying, when we read it, go for yourself from your father's house and go to a land that I'll show you. In blessing, I'll bless you. In, in multiplying, I'll multiply you. And through you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Oh, wonderful. But no, that's not what he was saying. He was saying, Abraham, I have placed on the inside of you everything that is needed to redefine humanity. Now remember, this is post Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11 gives us the whole account of what happened at Babel. At Babel, they were building the tower, building a city so that we can go to heaven and, and fight against God. In Hebrew, it's actually to fight against God. To do, Nimrod wanted to, to, to wage a war against God. That's what we have. So a whole people group, all of the people that existed were rising up in war against God. Everybody was worshipping a multiplicity of gods. They had the God of water, the God of fertility, Aishta, what people celebrate as Easter. That comes from Babylon, from Genesis chapter 11. Aishta, the God of fertility that gives out eggs and that gives out Easter bunnies that distribute the eggs as a sign and a symbol of fertility. All of that is, is what the Bible is teaching us. So all these multiplicities 
multiplicity of gods, God is now saying to Abraham, you will come out, come out from among them and I will take you to your leha, your journey of faith. You're stepping out in faith so that I can bring out from within you everything that is needed by your generation that will make you a blessing to your generation. But not only are you coming out to say we're establishing something new, you're going to establish monotheism, the worship of one singular God. It didn't make sense. How can you, in the midst of everybody, worshiping in their own way, worshiping a thousand gods, now say I'm going to worship one God? That's the lech lecha. It's going to take faith. The assignment that God is giving you cannot be done by faint-hearted people. It's going to take faith. You're going to have to be a woman of faith, a man of faith. You're going to have to understand that this thing, that's why the Bible says Abram believed God. God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. God is saying to you what I have called you to do you're not going to be able to do it just because you're pretty and cute and you've got nice nails and a nice hairstyle you're going to have to be a woman of faith a woman of prayer, a woman established in the word of God you're going to be a man of faith a man of vision, a man of focus a man who's planted in the house of God So he says to him, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, go forth. Don't do it for your pastor. Don't do it for the elders. Don't do it for your aunt. Don't do it for your cousin. Go for yourself. The blessing comes on you. You're doing it because God has a mandate and a blessing that he has prepared for you. Go for yourself. I'm about to multiply you. I'm about to make you great. I'm about to make your name great. I'm about to make you an influence. I'm about to make you a success in the nation. Go for yourself. It's amazing, Pastor Dave. I know not in Marble Hall, but in Johannesburg, people sometimes come to church, you know, they do it for the pastor. If I don't go to church, pastor won't have anybody to preach to. But not Marble Hall. Marble Hall people just love God. They, they come for themselves. But in Johannesburg, where I come from, you're all those people, people you, have to, you have to convince them to come to church. You have to be a, 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 a theatrist to do, to do stuff and tell people come to church. And church starts at this time. You know, you must be there on time. But not here. I mean, here you love God. You come on time. You, you, you're just such a special breed of people. I wish I could take you to Johannesburg (laughs) but you see don't come to church for me don't come to church for your neighbor come to church for you come and serve God for you come and honor God for you don't tithe because if I don't tithe there'll be no electricity no tithe because if you don't tithe you won't have electricity you won't have water you won't have your bills paid it's not about us needing stuff in the house of God but it's about us needing you to walk in the blessing you to walk in your authority you to walk in your dominion that's why God does this stuff hallelujah so in the lech lecha God places everything you need within you. We don't fully understand what happened in Genesis chapter 1, when the, in chapter 2, when the Bible says, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the earth and breathed into him the breath of life, the ruach of life. And, and man became a living nephesh, a thinking, speaking, rational being that had the capacity to dominate his space. We don't understand what actually happened. God imparted himself. So when we read Genesis chapter 2, what happened in Genesis chapter 2 in forming man and breathing into his nostrils is actually typified or pictured in Genesis 1 verse 28. When God says, when the Bible says, and God blessed him and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over everything that moveth upon the earth. That's what he's talking about in chapter 2 when he says he breathed into him. It was the breath, it was the release of words, because in Hebrew, words are breaths, words are puffs of air, words are blasts. So God released a blast into Adam that gave him the ability to 
function. So in blessing him, he imparted creativity. He imparted wisdom. He imparted principles. He imparted. So right there when God spoke into, into Adam and he said, be fruitful. Guess what else he said? He said, you will invent Bugattis. You will invent Ferraris. You will build tall skyscrapers. You will build ships that will go across the nations. You will design the internet. You will design iPhones. You will design cellular networks and technology. All of that was in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. When he imparted that word, he imparted into him the ability to restructure the world and make it what it is today. So when we talk about the lech lecha, we are talking about God's ability on the inside of you. Look at these two scriptures that we have on the screen. We have 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. His divine power has done what? Given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. His divine power has given us what? It has given us what? So when you go before God and you're praying for stuff, what are you doing? When we go before God and we say, God, I need a car. Lord, I need a financial breakthrough. Lord, I need money. Lord, I need this. God's looking down at heaven and says, didn't you, didn't you read my word? Didn't you read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3? I have given you everything. Now, he had to be specific. That pertains to life and godliness. Because if he hadn't specified, some religious person would have said, it's everything to do with our spiritual life and getting to heaven. No, he said everything to do with life. Life. What do I need in life? I need a car. What do I need in life? I need a hairpiece. What do I need in life? I need nails. What do I need in life? I need shoes. What do I need in life? I need a T-bone steak. What do I need? Come on, come on, come on. I have given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. So the lech lecha is about understanding. I have everything that pertains to life and godliness. So if I need a car, I got to bring it out of me. If I need a house, I got to bring it out of me. If I need a job, I got to bring it out of me. If I need healing, I got to bring it out of me. So in my days of being broke, I cried to God, I need money. I cried to God, I need a breakthrough. And God said, it's all on the inside of you. So I looked inside of me and out came success paradigms 101 our business I looked inside of me out came married and loving it I looked inside of me out came book number one book number two book number three book number four now book number 20 I looked inside of me out came a movie I looked inside of me out came married and loving it the business out came Zoha Christian Academy the school out of me came Faithland, Par Faithland Publishers out of me came Paradigm films. Out of me came faith that came Mitch the millionaire. I'm trying to remember all our businesses. There are too many. <laughs> so I looked inside and I realized when the doctor declared that day on the 6th of October in 1974 and said it's a boy. It wasn't just a boy. It was a conglomeration of solutions that were designed to redefine this generation. It was a world leading movie maker, a best selling author, a leading entrepreneur and coach, a leading voice and preacher of the word. Out of that word when he declared it's a boy my goodness but that boy had to come on a journey and get to a place where I had my lech lecha that moment when God says go for yourself within yourself and find the answers that are within you that are designed to make your life a blessing to your generation I came to prophesy to somebody you are an answer to this generation you are a solution you're not an accident you're not a mistake maybe your parents told you you're a mistake but I'm here to tell you you're not a mistake you are answer 
answers. You are solutions. Inside of you is an app that's going to make you a millionaire. Inside of you is a book that's going to change the world. Inside of you is a movie that's going to be watched by millions of people and they find hope. Inside of you is a business that's going to employ 500 people. Inside of you is a school that's going to educate some children. Inside of you is an orphanage that's going to rescue kids from the streets. Inside of you is a farm that's going to produce crops and take away poverty from some countries. Inside of you. There's a lech lech. I hear the voice of the Lord shouting and say, Go! for yourself go for yourself go for yourself go 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 get up and go you've been in haran for too long get up and go now you see the lech lecha is a journey of faith because you got to understand it's not easy to just pack your bags and leave if you notice where we read in the verse there god uses a bit of they call it in, in writing, they call it tautology. He repeats a statement. He said to Abraham, get thee out of your country and go to a land. And then Abraham took all that he had and got up to go to Canaan. And then it says, into the land of Canaan he came. God doesn't waste words. When he puts words, they have a purpose. So why did God use that repetitive language in order to express a simple point? He could have just said, Abraham left Haran and went to Canaan. But why did God have to repeat the statement? Because there's emphasis. What's the emphasis? The emphasis is Abraham did not follow the pattern of Terah, his father. What was the pattern of Terah? The pattern of Terah, God spoke to Terah while he was in ur Kasdin or Ur of the Chaldees or in the capital city of Babylon. He speaks to Terah who was making gods for Nimrod. And he says, get out of this land, go to Canaan. And Terah hears the voice of God, packs his bags and leaves for Canaan. But on his way to Canaan, the Bible says, and Haran died before his father. Before his father carries a double inference in Hebrew. Number one, it means before as in chronology. Fathers are supposed to die before their sons. Sons bury their fathers. Fathers shouldn't bury sons. So it was a breach of the divine protocol of fathers die first. So he says, and Haran died before his father. The second meaning is before as in front of. So the father witnessed his, fa his son's last breath. Now he becomes bitter because death, loss, grief causes all of us to be shaken. Whether it's the death of a family member or the loss of a car, or the loss of a cell phone, or the loss of 500 rand in your account, it causes pain and grief. So now here's a man who has set his heart to go to Canaan. He's obeying the voice of God. He's going to Canaan according to the divine instruction. On his way, halfway to Canaan, if you check the maps, you'll see where Haran is, and they're kind of halfway, they're almost there. The sun dies. Sorrow fills his heart. And the Bible says he settled in Haran. They built a city, established a place called Haran after the name of Haran who had died before him. And that speaks to many of us. Because many of us, we, God says, I want you to come and serve me. I want you to come and worship in the worship team. Serve in the house of God. I want you to come and be a member of the church. And when we get born again, we get excited. We start serving God. And we come to church. And then things start happening. Something dies. You lose something. And you say, but God, I'm a tither. God, I serve you. God, I'm praying. Why did this happen to me? Our pain, our sorrow, our grief causes us to disconnect from the divine mandate. The Bible actually says, if you read it, it says, and Haran died. Now, if you actually look at the timelines, 
of the births and the deaths of the patriarchs, you'll actually see that Harad, uh, Terah died many years after Abraham had already settled in Canaan. But why would God say in Genesis chapter 11 that Terah died when he actually died later? Because here's another Hebrew secret. Death in the Bible is more than the cessation of life. It is the disconnection from divine purpose. So when you disconnect from the mandate of God, you're considered dead. So we have many people in church that have died because they're no longer pursuing. They're no longer walking by faith. They're no longer stepping out of the boat to walk on the water. You're settled, you're sitting. Because the last time you tried to start a business, it failed. The last time you tried to get married, it didn't work. The last time you tried to have a baby, you, you, you had a miscarriage. The last time you tried to get out of debt, it didn't work. So now I cannot walk on the water anymore because last time I tried to walk, I sank in the water and I nearly died. So I don't like this water walking business. So I'm here to tell you all the way from Johannesburg, it is time to walk on the water. It is time to walk on the water. It is time to get up and walk on the water. So God says to Abraham, if you read in your Bible, the King James there, it says, and the Lord had said, the Lord had said, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, the Lord had said. In other words, in the process of time, what's happening in chapter 12 had already been a conversation prior to chapter 12. So he says to him, what? Get up, le le go for yourself within yourself to access what is within you so that you can be a blessing to the nations. But you've got to be located in Canaan. Because there are geographic locations that unlock your destiny. There are certain things that will happen to you because you are here in this church. There are certain things that will happen to you because you are here in this service. There are certain things that have been unlocked because you are in this conference. So he talks to him and he says, get up and go. And he says, okay, he gets up and he goes. He gets to Canaan and what does he do when he gets into Canaan? He builds there an altar to the Lord. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Your sacrifices will open doors for you to step into your next level. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, there, <clears throat> he says there's exceeding great power. That is at work within you. According to the power that is at work within you. According to the power that is at work within you. Chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us, who hath blessed us, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The word of God tells us in the book of Timothy, he charges and he says to the rich people, he says, I charge you rich people not to be high-minded or to trust in uncertain riches, but to trust in the Lord who gives Gives you richly all things to enjoy. Huh. So God has given me all things. All I have to do is learn to tap into what is on the inside of me. That's why I need the lech lecha. The book of Proverbs says that wisdom in a man is like deep waters and it takes a wise man to draw it out. So sometimes when I sit with great people, I have to know how to draw out the wisdom that is in the great person. But sometimes when I'm sitting all by myself, I am a great person. I have great stuff on the inside of me and I have to learn to draw out the book, draw out the movie, draw out the business plan, draw out the plan for my next level. So so I'm telling you right now, there is greatness on the inside of you that is yet to be tapped into. Oh, this is, this is exciting. I'm, I'm enjoying all by myself right here. <laughs> now listen to this statement. I want you to take note of this statement because it's going to redefine your life. Every generation places a demand for answers for the crisis that that generation is facing. Every generation faces a new set of crises. So every ge our generation is placing a demand now for cures to corona, uh, situations in education, crisis in political environments, crisis in the marketplace and in business. And guess what? God answers, God responds to the cry of the generation by raising a person who carries a combination of solutions. So I am speaking to some people here that are a combination 
combination of solutions. I am talking to somebody here today who is a combination. Inside of you is wisdom. Inside of you is creativity. Inside of you is answers. Inside of you is solutions. Inside of you is something that South Africa is crying for right now. The cry of the people is a cry, a prophetic call upon your life. The cry of the people is a lech lech calling the church to a new level of demonstration of the power of God. The cry of the political situation is a lech lech calling somebody who's going to be our next president, who's going to be our next premier, our next governor, but they come from the kingdom of God. The lech lech is saying to you, it's time for you to arise and be a ward counselor. It's time for you to arise and be an MP. It's time for you to arise because in five years, in ten years, I want to position you to be the next president. There is a lech lech going out, a calling going out. Go for yourself within yourself and discover the answers and the solutions that God has placed on the inside of you that will make you a blessing for our generation. So I came all this way to tell you it's time to get up. It's time to get up. It's time to get up. It's your season. As I close, let's establish something very beautiful here. The Bible tells us in Genesis 13, verse 17, he says, Arise and walk the land, the length of it, the breadth of it, and I will give it to you. God says, Arise and walk the land, the length of it, the breadth of it, for I will give it to you. I will give it to you. I will give it to you. The passage that we read earlier on, has got seven I will statements, and this is God speaking to you. There is no stronger assertion that can be made than to say, I will. So what did God say to you in Genesis chapter 12? He says, go to a land that I will show you, divine revelation, and I will make you great, divine expansion. And I will make you a great nation, divine multiplication. And I will bless you, divine empowerment. And I will make your name great. He enlarges your brand so that your brand is an influence. I will bless those that bless you empowering those that come and partner with you and those that curse you will I curse you'll fight against your enemy divine protection and divine preservation and then in verse 7 he says the land that you're walking I will give it to you and to your offspring divine establishment I'll give you the land 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 God is saying to you I'm giving you the land I'm giving you the land and the inhabitants I'm giving you the families I'm giving you the land I'm establishing you I'm giving you real estate I'm giving you the stuff I'm giving it to you I will give you the land and to your generations after you so God sent this young man from Johannesburg to tell you here today it's time to get up and walk on the water it's time to get up and walk, walk. It's time to walk on the water. You've been afraid to get up. It's time to get up. The picture that God gave us here was walk the length and the breadth of the land and I will give it to you in Mesopotamia or the land of the Bible. There's a, there, there was a process that was very interesting. If I was to come and negotiate to buy a piece of land from you and we see a few examples in the Bible then, I would negotiate and once we agree on the price, the owner who's selling the price would take my leg and pick it up and put it on the land as a symbol of authority has been given to you. Then he would take his leg and remove it from the land as a sign of saying, I'm releasing the land to you. I don't know, I don't know if some of you remember the, in the story of Ruth, there was that shoe thing that happened. The shoe thing in, in the redeeming of the land, that's what he was talking about. Because your leg or your foot, your, your, your foot represents your authority, your dominion. Every place where the soles of your feet shall tread, that have I given to you. So he's saying to you, all I need is for you to get up and move. The land belongs to me. So Abraham... I'm about to transfer the land of Canaan to you. Ownership is about to be transferred. Selabashakata. Land is about to be transferred. Assets about to be transferred. The highest level of authority and dominion is when the land belongs to you. As long as you're, you're renting and you're a tenant and you're, you're mobile, I love what you said. He, dwelling, he says, I will dwell amongst you. That meant permanence. 
It, mean, it, means, it means we're not going anywhere. So the moment you build a structure you, on your land, you're making a statement. I am a superpower here. I am a principality here. So God is saying to the church, church, hear my word. I am giving you land so that anything that is on your land will begin to believe in the God that you serve. God is a... I'm done with my message. Please stand if you can. I want to prophesy over you. God is taking your leg today. God is taking a hold of your foot today. And he's saying, come on, my daughter. Step on the land. Come on, my son. Step on that land. You've stepped on that land. You've stepped on that house. You've stepped on that property. You've stepped on those ideas. God is saying to you today, I came as an apostle. I came as a prophetic voice uh, to let somebody know in this service the land has been given to you. God is giving you dominion. God is giving you authority. God is giving you access. Uh, God is giving you favor. God is enlarging you. All you have to do is go for yourself within yourself uh, and access what is within you. Don't, don't look down on what you have. Uh, don't undermine what God has called you to do. Don't despise what God has placed on the inside of you. Young people, we're looking for you to be an answer. Young people, you are a solution for South Africa. Young people, you are a voice that's going to redefine our country. Young people, you are our presidents. You are our premiers. You are our governors. You are our ward counselors. There is greatness on the inside of you. Lift up your hands and let me pray for you. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, these great men and women of God before me, a collection of answers and solutions. This is a gathering of leaders. This is a gathering of influencers. This is a gathering of businessmen, businesswomen. This is a gathering of people that are a voice to their generation and not an echo. This is a gathering of people that dominate the marketplace. This is a gathering of champions. This is a gathering of water walkers. Those that refuse to sit in the boat. Those those that refuse to remain mediocre and small. So, Father, I release the blessing of greatness, the blessing of favor, the blessing of influence. I release upon them the, the spirit of faith. I activate the spirit of faith in them. Spirit of faith that will get out of this building today and say, I am taking Marble Hall for Jesus. I am taking this city for Jesus. I am taking this land for Jesus. I will tread upon the land. I release upon you that boldness, that confidence to walk on the water in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Teach. Were you blessed this morning? I want to tell you, I don't know how we can contain this. It's, so there's an explosion in the atmosphere, and we thank God for what he's doing. So family, thank you for being here. And maybe just for a moment, just you see that, just close your eyes. If you are sitting in this place, maybe somebody's looking or listening online at this moment. God is calling like Jesus. He says, come. But at this moment, there's a call for somebody, maybe listening online or you are in this place. And you need to make your life right with God. That's where it starts. This is that, that walk of faith. It starts with surrendering, making a decision, not depending upon myself anymore, not trying to do it by my strength, my ability. It's by surrendering completely. Say, so God, by faith, I will receive your gift of salvation. And today, as, as children of God are praying for you and you hear Holy Spirit talking to you, you need to make that decision and step out of the boat and say, I'm not making any excuses anymore. I'm surrendering, surrendering my life to the Lord Jesus. And if you are in this place and you say, Pastor, pray for me. I need to make my life right with God. Maybe you are backslid and you're not serving God anymore. Today is the day to, to come back. There's so much, so much 
He wants to do, but it starts by having a rebirth on the inside. It's on the inside it starts. That new creation starts on the inside. You need to get being born again and being a new creation. If you say, pray for me, I need to give my life to the Lord Jesus. Or maybe you, you need to come back to the Lord Jesus. If you want me to pray for you, for you, just quickly raise your hand if there's anybody. Just raise your hand. I see these hands going up. Hands are going up. While everyone's eyes are closed, if you've raised your hand, can you just quickly stand? Don't be ashamed. Just stand. Come on. Stand. If you need to do that today, stand. If you raise your hand, you can stand. While people are praying for you, this is the greatest miracle that is about to happen in your life. Heaven is taking notice at this moment, the decision that you're making. And I, I want to ask you, if you don't mind, if you're standing, just come quickly to the front. Come, 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 come. As they come, just give them a hand, just to encourage them as they are coming. And maybe you need to still, you need to make that decision. Come, as Holy Spirit is speaking, there's not a, this is not the time to waste anymore. God wants to do something great in your life. Come, come. Thank you. Come, come. Great. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for men and women that are making a decision. They are stepping out of that boat, stepping out of, of their selfish, sinful life. And they're stepping out into a glorious new life with you. And I pray they will never be the same again. They're not going back. From today, the world behind me, the cross before me. Today they are giving their all to you and your kingdom. Thank you that they will experience the greatest miracle ever of being born again. And family, can we just all pray and they pray with us and say, Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life to you. I acknowledge that you are my Lord and Savior. I know you, were rose, you, you rose from the dead. And I accept your gift of salvation. And thank you that I can be called a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. I am a new person. Father, and I seal that prayer with the Holy Spirit now. And thank you that they will grow and become mighty men and women of God. And thank you from this day, they know who they are and to who they belong to. We thank you in Jesus' name. Can we give God a praise and a thank you? <laughs> Hallelujah. If you don't mind, just stay, stay here. Somebody, some of our leaders wants to speak to you for a moment and pray with you. Thank you for being here. And if you want prayer for anything else, um, you're welcome to stay. Some of the leaders will pray with you. Thank you for being here. And I don't know, you cannot miss tonight. I don't know. There's nothing else to do. So don't miss tonight. And then as well, the Young People Legacy 316 has got a braai afterwards. So where's Taylor? Is Taylor nearby? Or Celise, just wave. There's some of our young people. So just speak to them. Um, afterwards, Legacy 316 will have a braai. And we are so excited about our young people. God is busy doing great things with our young people. And we are excited and